Welcome back. Uh, South Africa's net foreign reserves rose to 41.8953 billion dollars in September from 40.795 billion dollars the previous month. Our gross reserves were also up at 47.247 billion dollars from 45.708 billion dollars. The forward position, which represents the central bank's unsettled or swap transactions, climbed to 2.201 billion dollars from 1.771 billion dollars. Our dear Geo PLC, the parent company of Guinness Nigeria, recently informed investors that it is no longer interested in taking up a further 15.7% of Guinness Nigeria PLC. Now, the company had last year made an offer to take up 15.7% of its Nigerian subsidiary in a move seen by many as a show of confidence in the outlook of its beleaguered subsidiary. The offer would have taking the parent company's equity holding to about 7%. However, the continuous dip in Guinness revenues and the resultant loss that's first in 32 years have, may have caused a rethink. Now, research analysts at Exotics Partners uh, says the move by Diageo is not surprising. Why? Let's talk to the head of research West Africa Exotics Partners, Asili Ewe. Good afternoon, Asili. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon, Chimi. It's a pleasure to be on. Right. Now, their geo cancelling plans to acquire minorities disappoints, but for you, it's not a surprise. Why? Well, I was saying that in the context of, you know, the delay. I mean, as you pointed out, this offer or, or intention was made clear last year, September, and it's taken them about over a year to come back to the market to say they're no longer interested. So we knew that you know there was clearly a risk that uh, they decided to cancel uh, that, that plan. Now, you have also expressed some mixed feelings. I mean, since they've canceled this plan, you've somewhat expressed some kind of mixed feelings over this development, uh, leaning more towards the negative. What are your concerns there? The concern is, I mean, clearly we thought that this would have been an opportunity for Diageo uh, to basically set a floor for the, the, the stock of the, the subsidiary Guinness Nigeria. When, as you've seen over the last couple of sessions, the stock has fallen and uh, we're currently down, this, the stock is currently down about 10% since Wednesday when this was announced. And the truth is that if you look at actually the offers you have in the marketplace, uh, the likelihood is for it, for, for it to probably keep falling for the next couple of sessions. We currently have, you know, uh, offers in excess of about 5 million units of the company stock. So there's clearly a lot of downside pressure there. Uh, and I believe that if they had gone ahead with, with this offer, even if at a, at a, lower, at a lower level, uh, I think that it would have been able to rally some support for, for Guinness's stock. Now, on the, on, on, the, uh, on the positive side, I just want to stress that you know, the statement did not completely rule out the possibility of, you know, a deal in the medium term. It somewhat just says, look, you know, we're basically casting this for now because we think that it makes a lot of sense to focus our resources on supporting Guinness Nigeria. Uh, and they've done that to an extent by extending about $95 million of uh, short-term debt to, to the company, in, in, you know, amid the, the challenges sourcing FX, FX at the moment. Uh, so that I, that I kind of see as a positive, but it's not encouraging that, you know, uh, they couldn't call a flaw for Guinness Nigeria stock, especially given that the stock is at a seven-year low. You know, if it falls any further, we're looking at potentially a 10-year low. Uh, they're clearly investors who are, you know, quite vested in the stock. And I think given the potential that a company for the company has got relatively strong uh, brands, iconic uh, brands uh, for that matter. Uh, we think that uh, the new, some of the new initiatives uh, with respect to cost cutting, you know, expanding route to market, uh, and uh, also with respect to innovations as well, could definitely lead the company to a recovery over the medium term. So, calling a flaw at this point, I think, would have been a very good indication for the market. All right, thank you very much um, for your time, Esili. Uh, Esili, a head of research, West Africa Exotics Partners.
Zimbabwe is losing at least $1 billion annually to corruption, with police and local government officials among the worst offenders. That's according to a report by the Transparency International. Social media groups like hashtag this flag and hashtag Tadamoka have cited corruption in President Robert Mugabe's government and police roadblocks where money is taken from motorists as among the main reasons for protests that have rocked the southern African nation in the last few months. In the meantime, Zimbabwe will amend a black empowerment law that aims to transfer majority shares from foreign-owned firms to locals after it was blamed for deterring investment. The indigenization and economic empowerment law requires foreign companies, including mining firms and banks, to transfer at least 51% of shares to black Zimbabweans. But implementing the policy has been difficult, with Mugabe's ministers often issuing conflicting statements. Mugabe in April said the law was confusing businesses and made it hard for Zimbabwe to compete for foreign investment. In its current form, the empowerment policy requires foreign-owned miners like Anglo-American Platinum, Impala Platinum, and Aquarium Platinum to cede 51% shares in their local operations to the government, mining communities, employees, and an empowerment trust. A Kenya demand for locally made organic cosmetics is increasing fueled by their affordability compared with foreign brands and the natural skin and hair care movement. And the coming report looks at Kenyan entrepreneurs who are filling the gap in the market which is expected to grow because of a government decision to impose taxes on foreign cosmetics. Kenyan entrepreneur Lucy Kinyobi whips up handmade hair products and cosmetics at her house in the capital, Nairobi. In the quest for a remedy to ease our two-year-old son's eczema, Lucy developed natural soap, oil, and butter formula, which she now sells under her product line, Share by Assol. The product has also grown in popularity among women who want to maintain their skin and hair with the least amount of chemicals possible. People who look for natural solutions for their hair care problems, skin care issues, because most of what we find in the market has about 10% 10 to 20 percent organic ingredients and the other stuff is all artificial and most of the stuff costs an arm and a leg for no good reason. Sheba Assel's range of products from lip balm retailing at three US dollars to body butters for up to 20 US dollars target middle class buyers with a flexible disposable income but they are still markedly cheaper than the imported international brands that make up the bigger chunk of the market. It's a full-time job for Lucy to compete with the big brands. She markets and sells her products online and to beauty shops and salons across the country. She also relies heavily on recommendations and personal contact with her customers, a major selling point that foreign brands don't often provide. I like the fact that it's natural. I know what's going into my system, into my skin. And I like the fact that I can call her and say, hey, I have this sort of skin and this is reacting. What's, what could be the issue or can we change? So there's that one-on-one -on -one service and I like that there's an after sale. In Kenya, several small businesses are using the shift to provide local affordable alternatives. So when the finance minister slapped a 10% excise duty on imports of cosmetics, the idea that these small businesses could further undercut global industry giants became more of a reality. And that's it on the program. Thank you very much for watching. Do enjoy your weekend.